Hi, I'm back on the show again with Keith Handler from Sterling Medical Devices. Keith, thanks for coming back. Hi, Lee. Thanks for having me. So in our third segment on medical device security, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the hardware elements, how the software gets loaded onto medical devices, and what things are in place to help protect med medical devices from cyber compromises. So first, uh, Keith, can we start off with telling everyone what FIPS 140-2 is and how, how that plays a role? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, FIPS is the Federal Information Processing Standard. 140-2 is the specific certification for encryption libraries. Uh, that certification means that those encryption libraries are proven to be usable and certified to be usable for federal systems and medical systems. Yeah, and it's, most hospitals require FIPS 140-2 uh, for media devices if you're transferring PHI uh, patient health information. Mm -hmm. um, if you're tr transferring that information to external storage, they want to make sure you're using secure storage that meets federal information processing standards. Correct. So when uh, you're evaluating a device for security, what are some of the things that you do to help ensure that the, the firmware um, that's stored on the chips um, is secure and safe? Well, with an embedded device, it's a challenge, of course. You have limited space, limited capabilities, typically, especially on lower power devices. Um, if you've got the space and the ability, we can use hardware encryption chips. Uh, hard circuits, those are usually the most reliable and the most performant. Uh, if not, there's plenty of embedded libraries out there that are FIPS 140-2 certified. Um, the main thing being that uh, we never roll our own as far as encryption libs go. We use federally certified ones to ensure that we're up to the current standards um, yeah. and encryption strength. And those standards change over time. Correct, yes. So at one, one point in time, SHA-1 encryption used to be considered perfectly fine, but now with quantum computing, there's been yes. a rush to ditch SHA-1 and require SHA-2 uh, as an encryption library to help secure things. Yes, and so this, this brings up an important point, actually. How do we keep things secure moving forward when new vulnerabilities are found, new attacks are found, libraries are cracked? Yeah, so what, what do hospitals and other healthcare providers need to be doing to ensure that their devices stay secure once well, deployed? Well, hospital and healthcare providers need to be making sure that they are up to date with the manufacturer of all their devices, mm -hmm. uh, that they're keeping apprised of any kind of recalls or anything like that. Uh, manufacturers, the people that we typically deal with, product developers, their responsibility is to maintain a bill of materials, a cyber bill of materials, their libraries, their encryption circuits, make sure that they're tracking the versions and things like that so that when a company has an, a vulnerability exposed, they can become aware and make updates and push them, software especially, uh, as fast as possible. Yeah, so if, if an organization, a healthcare entity, were to become compromised, uh, have you been involved with supporting a client that underwent a, a cyber compromise? I have not. We're usually in the earlier stages of developing the products prior to that occurring, and our products hopefully never get compromised. Yeah. So I, I'd imagine, though, that if there's a concern about the security of certain medical devices, that there's a need to actually dump uh, the firmware. And firmware is software stored on an embedded chip. but. Uh, the firmware um, will persist after power down, reboots, and whatnot, but there is an ability to go and extract the firmware off the chip with the, the correct tools, such as a bus pirate or other devices. And then um, what would you do to examine, if you had access to the firmware on a chip, how would you go about ensuring that that's authentic? Uh, well, the first thing is if we're going to push out firmware, things like that, you need to make sure that the device can know that it's authentic. Mm -hmm. And we do things again like digital signing, uh, signature verification, encrypting of that firmware package. That way we have a verification process in place to ensure that mm -hmm. what we've got coming down is good. And so that's known as a hash. Uh, and, that's part so, of it, yes. So the hash value is the unique encrypted thumbprint generated by a hashing algorithm. And those hash values can be used to compare against the manufacturer's release version and what's on the chip to determine are they running the most 
recent up-to-date firmware? Or are they running uh, an older version? Or are they running something that's rogue that is not known by yes. the manufacturer? Yes, and that's the real key, to make sure that what we're running is what we expect it to be and not something that has been tampered with. Yeah. So how often are our hospitals and their IT staff actually auditing and checking their mm -hmm. firmware? Uh, you know, I'm not clear on that, but I would say almost certainly not enough. Yeah. So that, that's one of the things that um, I know you've said earlier that it's important that all these entities using the devices, once they're certified and deployed, there's still a responsibility on the, the healthcare delivery organizations to make sure that they're patching and updating those devices so that they keep the standards Ideally. To the now, nowadays, a lot more devices are connected, um, communicating out with central servers, and that gives them the advantage of being able to receive security updates. So uh, it takes that middleman out, essentially. Uh, but that also opens up additional potential security holes that have to be considered and protected against. Yeah. Uh, anything that comes to mind that you're concerned about with mm -hmm. regard to new threat vectors? Well, you know, again, if I'm distributing firmware by handing it to you on a USB stick, you can be pretty certain that what I'm giving you is likely to be good. Yeah. If I'm telling you download it from the site, you don't know. Yeah. Um, for all you know, it could get tampered with in transit. So it, it raises a lot of additional risks. Do you think that there's something to be said for going back to the old uh, updates on CD read-only mm -hmm. media? Well, you know, uh, information is what it is, and yeah. things move faster nowadays. So I, I don't know that it makes sense <laughs> to move backwards. It just means that we have to have more modern methods of protection. Yeah. Well, thanks a bunch for being on the show. This is great stuff. Yeah, you're very Appreciate welcome, it. and thanks for having me. It's my pleasure.